The 1960s pop music scene was full of lovely melodies and progressive ideas, and the Zombies were a band that had both of these things going on for them. And we're going to explore their journey here on Pop Goes the 60s. Sometimes I feel a little lonely The summer is here at last Formed in 1962 in St. Albans, which is about 20 miles north of London, Paul Atkinson, Rod Argent, and Hugh Grundy formed a band. Now Rod asked his cousin Jim Rodford to join, but he was in another band called the Blue Tones at the time and declined. So on bass guitar, Paul Arnold joined them. Now this was the formation uh, of the band, just a school band, and eventually they added another guy by the name of Colin Blundstone. Now Colin had a guitar, and Paul Arnold said, well why don't you bring that along, we could use a guitar player. Yeah, a rhythm player. So he did. And as they got to know each other a little better, Rod Argent heard Colin Blundstone sing. And he said, man, I was going to be the lead vocalist, but you've got a much better voice. And likewise, Colin Blundstone heard Rod Argent play the keyboards. And he said, you know, you're such a great keyboard player. Why don't we have that be one of the instruments in the band? Now, they originally called themselves the Mustangs, but there were several other bands with that name. So they came up with the name The Zombies, and that was Paul Arnold's idea. Now at this time they were playing R&B covers, Shadows covers, and they also ventured into a little more jazzy pop as well. So in this early stage, this is roughly uh, early 1964, this is the lineup of the band. Chris White took over on bass, having replaced the recently departed Paul Arnold, Rod Argent on keyboard and vocals, Hugh Grundy, drums and percussion, Paul Atkinson, guitar and backing vocals, and Colin Blundstone on lead vocals. Now they had been a semi-pro band uh, up until this point and until they won this contest, this Battle of the Bands, where there was a small recording contract on the line with DECA, this is when they turned pro, they decided not to go to university, and they just became a full-time band. One of the immediate things about this group is that the keyboard sound made them totally different. This is in the era of guitar bands and there were very few keyboard bands out there. Uh, man for Man was around, uh, I don't know if that was the driving instrument in the band, but Rod Argent played it in a jazzier way and it really stood out. Now their first session was almost a disaster because the producer that they were working with was drunk and they, they couldn't get any work done at all. He was in that bad of shape. So the tape operator, Gus Dudgeon, took over. Now Dudgeon may be a familiar name to you if you're an Elton John fan. He was Elton John's producer for most of his early career. Ken Jones was assigned to be the producer, and the first song they cut was Gershwin's jazz standard, Summertime. Won't you hush, pretty baby, don't you cry. In these early sessions, the band was only planning to record R&B covers that they were doing live, but producer Ken Jones suggested that they write some of their own original material, and Rod Argent came up with this one. Well, no one told me This was an incredible debut single fueled by Arjun's keyboard playing, which made them sound completely different than the other British Invasion bands at the time, and really anything going on in America as well. So this song was an instant success. It hit number 12 in the UK and number 2 on Billboard in the United States, but number 1 in Cashbox. Now they had recorded several songs for a, a potential album, but they released an EP first with Summertime on it and three Argent originals. A little lonely. Well, don't you know that sometimes I feel a little lonely. If you wanna mess around, just stay away from my door. These songs all had some great British beat with their trademark Zombies harmonies. Now, Rod Argent wasn't the only one writing in the band. Chris White wrote the next single, which was called Leave Me Be. If it seems that I'm too quiet, that's cause I'm missing her, my mind. Now this song, it's just a great song, but it did not chart in the UK at all. I really am surprised that the momentum of She's Not There didn't at least carry this onto the charts at least somehow, but it did not. And because of that, in America, that song was not slated to be the next single. They held back on that a bit and released the song 
tell her no. And that she should tell you, come closer. Tell Her No charted at a disappointing number 46 in the UK, but it hit number 6 in the States, so another big hit. And this was the beginning of a divergence of chart success in both countries. At this point, they had two hits in the States, and they prepared a, an album for spring release, which is this one here. In America, it was called The Zombies, featuring She's Not There, Tell Her No. In the UK version is quite different, but generally speaking, Chris White and Rod Argent filled this out with a lot of really excellent originals. I can't make up my mind Someone has to help me I never seem to know what to do The softer rock songs on here were really given great treatment by Colin Blundstone's breathy vocals, but they also did some excellent rock songs as well. I'm a road runner, honey. So for the next single, they relied on Rod Argent, who seemed to have the magic touch, and they released She's Coming Home. She's Coming Home struggled in the United States, only hitting number 58. And it hit number 21 in Canada, which is very respectable, but it completely missed the charts in the UK. Now, because of this, the band started to just focus on the, the American market because that's where they seemed to have their most success. Now, Parrot Records in the United States was hungry for the next single, and they released this song called I Want You Back Again. To stand on my feet. Now, I'm somewhat baffled that they would ever release this single in the States, but Parrot was hot for the single, and they loved it. They thought it was going to hit, but it completely bombed, hitting number 92 in Billboard, and it didn't chart in the UK at all. So this song was just far too jazzy, I think, and just didn't sound like the Zombies' earlier hits. So that led them to go back to more of a pop song with the next single called Whenever You're Ready. You're not teaching me a new thing, try to realize So this song only hit number 110 in Billboard, and it was their second straight bomb, and their third straight single in the UK to miss the chart entirely. So things started to look dire for the band at this point because they had plenty of songs to release a new, uh, an album, a second album, but uh, because of these poor charting singles, that album didn't really happen. So what happened instead was this soundtrack, Bunny Lake is Missing. This is an Otto Preminger film from 1965. And the band was commissioned to write three songs for this film. And the only problem was is they were really low on material. So they had to quickly write three songs. And one of the songs that was written was called Just Out of Reach. This was written by Colin Blundstone. Just out of reach. Time has changed you. I can see. Try to remember how we... The song Just Out of Reach was featured in the film and was the next single, but it only charted at number 113 in the States. So they just couldn't buy a hit here. And one of the other things that's memorable from this movie is the zombies do the promo for the movie as well. Otto Preminger presents Bunny Lake is Missing. What suspense? Oh. Lawrence Olivier is immense. Come on time. Come on time for the show. The clock will tell you when to go. While the show's on, can you get in? No! Come on time! Please come on time. So two other excellent songs that the zombies do are on the soundtrack, so if you're able to track this down, it's totally worth it. And if I should change my mind And I do sometimes, you know I do sometimes You didn't mean 
The band's output in 1965 is some of the nicest, best pop music coming out at the time. And for some reason, they just did not resonate with the public. I think part of that is because is some of their music might have been a little too jazzy and too sophisticated compared to some of their contemporaries coming out in ink, like Herman's Hermits, uh, Dave Clark Five, The Hollies. These bands uh, were straight pop bands and riding high in the charts, so there was a lot of competition. Now, I think the zombies also had somewhat of a nerdy image. There was these pictures of them bowling and playing chess, and they were very studious. They had the glasses on, and they kind of give Freddy and the Dreamers a run for their money as far as nerd image goes. But really, I think they were also up against what I call the new rock, because some of the other British acts coming out at the time, the Stones were really hitting their stride. You had the Kinks. You had the Small Faces, the Who, the Pretty Things. These were the bands that were showing where the future of rock was going, and the Zombies somewhat fell into the middle of the two groups. Now, I liken the Zombies music at this time to the Pet Sounds era Beach Boys, where, like the Beach Boys, they started bringing more complex arrangements, more orchestration, and I think a lot of fans at that time, and AM radio listeners, didn't take to it as much. It might have been a little too sophisticated. And until those audiences grew into the music later, that's when it was accepted as masterpiece level type of music. Now the Zombies music at this time I wouldn't say is masterpiece yet, but it's going to get there. So in 1966 an album did get released and that's this one. This is called, in some markets it's called I Love You, but it was only released in the Netherlands and Japan. UK and the United States did not even get a, uh, a release on this one. And this compiled some new material, mostly all originals, some of the recent singles as well. So there was no shortage of high quality singles, and even though uh, they were very good and very high quality, they weren't even charting in the States now. And the next single, which was called Is This a Dream, it was praised by both George Harrison and Pete Townsend. And even that attention by those great big stars couldn't get it on the charts. So by early 1967, they were still gigging regularly, and uh, they shifted gears a little bit here and did some covers. The next single was a cover of Going Out of My Head, and you would hear them sometimes appear on BBC doing a song like The Look of Love. So as you might expect, going out of our heads missed the charts as well, and this switch to covers this late in the game may have been too late to expect any kind of change, but most bands, after two years of straight failure on the charts, probably would have packed it in at this point, but the Zombies had one more trick up their sleeve. We're going to find out what that was in part two of the Zombies here on Pop Goes the 60s. Mm -hmm. 